from the book of Proverbs only today. We're going to look at the expression that you see in yellow. Fear the Lord. And when I grew up after high school, there was bumper stickers and window stickers, no fear, no fear. And when you look at the world today, it is in the condition of it is because the lack of fear, especially the lack of fear in the Lord. And people have exchanged the fear of the Lord to themselves. And I don't mean the fear of themselves. I mean, it's themselves. I mean, black lives matter. I mean, no. All lives matter. We got a nation today, you know, they uphold Donald Trump as a god. And they, Christians... go against the scriptures and they mock the President of the United States Joe Biden you ain't Christian you ain't Bible put away King James Bible 1611 put away Christian title and your pastor title if you're going to rank on the President of the United States you don't fear God and you don't fear the word of, word of the Lord. What is our achievement of the President of the United States and all the Presidents are still alive and the First Ladies and the past First Ladies and the children? We're to be praying for them. We ought to be speaking to God more in this present and evil world that we live in. Now, Proverbs 170, you see on the screen, the fear of the Lord. Solomon writing is the beginning, the start. You know, you see in Genesis 1 and John chapter 1, the Gospel of John, in the be I mean, 1 John, in the beginning. Solomon's in the beginning is knowledge. And when you read the book of Psalms, Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and the book of Proverbs, especially chapter 1, wisdom, was there with God before the heavens and the earth were ever made. God is knowledge. God is wisdom. God is understanding Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, the Trinity. We live in a day and age of knowledge of colleges and universities, and yet there are people who don't know if they're a male or female. They don't know who they are, they don't know what they are, they don't know what they came from, and they don't know where they're going. The church has no knowledge of God because the church does not fear God, the Lord. They fear not being accepted by people. They fear the, the, the authority of the pastor. But they don't have the fear of the Lord. That's knowledge. They say we got universities and they're expensive and everything like that. And they're coming out and they don't know nothing. Oh, you can make a nuclear bomb. You can build a nuclear submarine. You, you can design an electric car. You, you can come up with all these achievements of worldly knowledge. You can go to Mars. You can go to the moon. You can have a space camp. But if you do not know God, you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, you will die and you will burn in hell for all eternity. Knowledgeable men, all the way back to Adam, 
are in hell today and are going to hell. And they know how to take a key, put it in the ignition, and turn their vehicle on. But they don't know God. They don't know, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. They don't know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but shall have everlasting. They don't know that. And churches today are told, go in all the world and preach the gospel. They're not taking the knowledge of Jesus Christ and the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. No, you know what they're taking? Come to our VBS. Come to our church. We're having a revival service. We're having these great preachers. We're having these great singing events. Oh, we're going to have a great time. We're going to have fun, fun, fun with no knowledge of God. Friend, the only way a lost man is going to come into the church is by faith and belief and fear of the Lord. There's no faith and belief. There's no trust in Jesus and in the cross and the resurrection. They can go to your church 365 days in a year for 400 quadrillion years and still be lost. With all the religion. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. And if you go over to Psalms chapter 14, it says the fool has said in his heart that there is no God. That's remarkable. Because when you come over to, I don't have it set up. When you come over to Proverbs, I thought I did. I was looking at something else today. Sorry, Proverbs. Chapter 1, it says here, The fear of the Lord is beginning of knowledge. Okay? Oh, that's where we are now. The fear of the Lord is beginning of knowledge. Psalms 14 says, The fool has said in his heart that there is, they don't fear God. They don't care. I mean, many, many, many years ago when I grew up lost, before I was saved in April 1987, I was I was in a Catholic in a Catholic church, and the Catholics feared God. <laughs> well, they may have the wrong God, they may have the m wrong ways, but they feared a God. That's not happening today. Now is wisdom and understanding, and a fool can't get it. Why? Because he doesn't fear the Lord. Look at verse 29. For they, for that they, the fool, the, the, those that reject Jesus Christ, if you read Proverbs chapter 1, we're not going to look at it. The simpleton, the, the, the scorner. I forget who the third one was. There was a scorner, there was a simpleton, and there was another one. And when they hear you preach, when they hear you teach, when they look at the Bible you're reading to, when you tell them, and they just completely mock, they completely walk away, they just don't listen. They hate the knowledge. No, they may go to school. They may have a job. They may be an auto mechanic and have to open up Chilton's book to see, okay, this is how I put this thing together. But when it comes to the knowledge of the Holy, when it comes to the knowledge of the Bible, when it comes to the knowledge of God, they hate it. And did not choose the fear of the Lord. He says, Stolly, what's going on in the world today? They don't fear God. They hate God's knowledge. They don't want to hear about it. Listen, I preached, I don't know how many years, here in Daytona Beach, Florida. Daytona Beach. Daytona 500. The Coke 400, I think it is. When you watch those races on the television, here I am in Daytona. And every Saturday they had a farmer's market. And I would preach, I don't know how many years. And the city of Daytona and the farmer's market hated me, hated Jesus, and tried everything they could with their lawyers and the police to shut me up.
and they couldn't. You say, what What was the only thing for those people at the farmer's market should have done? Fear the Lord. Fear the Lord. And many did not. They got angry. They turned me off. I had, there was one guy there. Uh, he hated Jesus. Not me. They hated Jesus. And you know, I said things where I was, I was anti-Jewish and all. I mean, you just hate Jesus. You hate the fear of the Lord. You didn't want him. I don't know who they chose. I don't know if they chose the Pope. I don't know if they chose uh, the space program. I don't know what. George Washington, uh, Hamilton, Franklin, I don't know. Proverbs 2 5. Then, then shall they understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. The fear of the Lord bringeth knowledge. And when you understand the fear of the Lord through the knowledge of the fear of the Lord, then you're going to find the knowledge of God. Now you cannot say, I know God and don't fear Him. There are plenty of people that will tell you, and I've heard, you know, I'm a Christian. Well, are you afraid of the moment that what you're doing right now that is sin constantly doing do you not fear that the rapture could happen right now and you be caught and you say no you what we just read three verses what you just read is if you cannot know God without the fear of the Lord without choosing the Lord with the, the knowledge the wisdom and the understanding that comes from the fear of the Lord. Listen, I still sin. My fear of the Lord is I don't say that in pride. I say that with a head bowed and repenting to God and seeking God help. I don't want to do that. And we come to Proverbs 8.13, the fear of the Lord, there it is again, 14 times in Proverbs, is to hate. Oh, he's a hate monger. He's a hater. Erase the hate. That's not Bible. Later on in Proverbs, you're going to see there are seven things that God hates. There are things that the whole holy God of love hates. If you erase the hate from the Bible, and they probably did in these modern versions, then you've got the chaos that's going on today in the world, and even more so when the Antichrist comes, and Lord forbid when God takes the church out and lets Satan run and rule this people and world. <clears throat> and then Proverbs 8.13 will just be a phantom. Because it says, if you fear the Lord, oh, you know, I'm a Christian, you are to hate evil. And many people can't even describe what evil is. To them, evil is what shows up on the movie screen. So the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It is choosing Jesus choosing the Lord and to understand would be the knowledge of God and the fear of the Lord is number one hate evil now like I said I grew up as a Roman Catholic understand me right now I do not hate Catholics but I hate the hierarchy I hate the Roman Catholic system but not the Catholics 
I stood outside of Catholic churches and I preached the word and I got gospel tracts out. I had one guy one year and we did that and he came out with a garbage can. He was getting those tracts out and he would throw them in the garbage and I hated that. But I prayed for him. Pride. You can say you are a Christian, and let me say it, you're going to support Donald Trump, the, the pride of Donald Trump. You're going, to, you're going to say, God bless America, and America in his pride, and the pride of your football team, and the... Wait a minute. The fear of the Lord says you're to hate pride. Well, listen, you've got all these things you're proud of, and you got all these things you're representing pride, and you got all these things you're supporting in pride. You don't fear the Lord. Like I said, I pray for Donald Trump, but I hate his pride. I look at that face, and I see arrogancy. And I would say, when you see the face of Donald Trump, you should put that face down in the Bible, and they're going to hate me for this, under arrogancy, the definition. I pray for him. I'm proud to be... No, 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 no. You can't say that and have the fear of the Lord. Arrogancy. You're just arrogant. You're to hate that. You're to hate somebody is just... It's all about me. Black lives matter. You can't say you're a Christian. And support such a thing. All lives matter when it comes to the cross of Jesus. And the evil way. Now we either hate evil and the evil way. Religion is an evil way. Education is an evil way. When they teach monkey men, they teach everything but creation that's an evil way you're to hate that i pulled my children out of the public system. they never went one day in the public system because they teach evolution and they teach sex education both my son and my daughter never went once into a public school because i hated the even teachers i pray pray for the teachers pray for the students but the system again don't say I'm anti-Catholic. Don't say I'm anti-public school and all that. No. The system. I hated the fact is, unless I humbled myself, they were going to put handcuffs on me and arrest me here in Daytona Beach, Florida, USA, for preaching the gospel. A forward mouth you're to hate. Oh, just a wicked, vile, nasty talk. Your talk shows. It's just nonsense. People you work with. The, the, just the filth and the, you know, they come, they come to work Monday, and oh, you can't believe all the women I slept with, all oh, the parties that we had, oh, that's filthy. You really hate that. Fear the Lord is the, the hate evil, pride, arrogancy, the evil way, and the forward mouth do I hate. That's God speaking. You can't be any of that and then turn around and say, I'm a Christian. Now, you're, you're a Christian, and the fact is, okay, you're saved, you're going to heaven. But your character, your character is who you are when no one's around you. And if you remain in that arrogancy, you remain in that pride, and you remain in that evil, you may be saved and going to heaven, but, man, you don't fear the Lord. Verse, chapter 9, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning. Here it is. Beginning, another one. Of wisdom. So, the fear of the Lord, verse 7, chapter 1, is the beginning of knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Now, 
So at the same time, when you get the fear of the Lord, you will get knowledge, you will get wisdom, and the knowledge, chapter 1, verse 7, of the holy is the understanding. So let's look at this. Chapter 1, verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Chapter 2, verse 5. Then thou shalt understand the fear of the Lord. Chapter 1, verse 29. For they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They did not put their faith in Jesus Christ. They didn't have no fear in the Lord at the beginning. So they didn't get knowledge. Chapter 9, verse 10, they did not get the wisdom from the fear of the Lord and the knowledge of the Holy is understanding. So chapter 2, verse 5, thou shalt understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. They all three work together on the source of the fear of the Lord. That would cause you to repent and put your faith and trust in Jesus. Why won't my uncle, why won't my wife, why won't my neighbor, why won't that person get saved? They fear the Lord. And then you run back to chapter 8, verse 13. They either have pride, they're involved in evil, they're arrogant, there's an evil way, a religion, a science, an education, whatever, they're just forward in their mouth. Listen, the science exploration of any nation, including America, is to go out there in outer space and prove the Bible is wrong. God doesn't know what he's talking about. So you cannot know God. And you cannot say you can understand God without the fear of the Lord. And the fear of the Lord is when you choose Jesus Christ as your Savior. You put your faith and trust in Jesus. You get the Holy Spirit that dwells with you. And you cannot know anything without the Holy Spirit. You could read the Bible and not be a Christian, not be saved. You can read the Bible 365 days in the year for 20 years, 70 years. You won't know nothing. And without the saving grace of Jesus and the faith in the, the death, burial, and resurrection, you'll burn in hell. And you read the Bible. But you did not fear God. You did not choose the Lord Jesus Christ. Chapter 10, verse 27, The fear of the Lord prolongeth days. Now, we are in the Old Testament. But this still, this goes for Christians. You know how many times because you're saved and because you're putting your faith and trust in Jesus, you know how many times God has prevented you from dying? How about all those times that you were running late for whatever reason? You had to make a U-turn and go back home for something. Or you had to make a U-turn and go back to work. And, or you were asked to stay late. And we, I said we get grumbled and we get upset and we get aggravated and and if we were going through that intersection when we were going to go through that intersection we might have been hit by a, a person the fear of the Lord for longest days it's remarkable today I was going to say January July 21st 2024 we are in an age of great knowledge of wisdom and understanding of education 
We got a space station, so they say. Yet yeah, a person can walk across the street without looking both ways. Friend, let me tell you, as a boy growing up, you know how many times my butt was whacked by my mother when I ran across the street and she caught me? You know how many times I was in trouble when we would be at the grocery store parking lot and, you know, we get out of the car and i run all the way up to the front door without looking both ways? You know how often I got in trouble? You know how many times my mother prevented me from ending up in the hospital? Your people just barge right on out. It's a crosswalk. So what? Do you know how much it takes for the speed limit that car is going to break? I had to, rem to, to learn braking distance to get my driver's license. I don't know if they do that today. The fear of the Lord is maybe that God the Father has allowed you to live longer for His purpose. Be absent from the body and be present with the Lord. But Paul said it's more needful for me and I, I can't quote the rest of Scripture correctly. Paul says, listen, I'd rather go home back, go back to heaven. He already visited heaven. But, so, but Paul said, you know what? It's needful for me to be here. And I'm at that slump right now. I am seriously medically declined. And I'm like, I want to go home. The Lord's like, I got use for you. And I know there, there are unsaved people out there. And their lives have been saved. But they don't fear the Lord. How often does God get the testimony, God get the credit for that earthly salvation? Fourteen twenty six, the fear of the Lord is strong confidence. Listen, I'll give you one right now. Outside the rapture, and I, I have strong confidence, the Lord's coming. One day that trump is going to blow, and Christians who are asleep and who are alive are going up, and we're going to meet Jesus. I believe that. I have a strong confidence that if I were to die today, I will be in the presence of Jesus Christ. I don't know how quick. I may go to bed tonight, close my eyes, and then see Jesus. I believe that. I have a strong confidence. I am not going to hell. I will not burn in hell because of Jesus. I have a strong confidence that many Christians don't have today in the King James Bible. There are people, yeah, I'm King James. Are you King James only? No. I've had Christians in a Baptist church, King James... Mock me for my confidence in the King James Bible. I firmly believe God said it, believe it. I know I'm saved. I know the King James Bible is the Word of God. I don't have strong confidence in the church building assembly. But I have strong confidence. There is a place called heaven where God's throne is. There is the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. He suffered and died and was buried and rose again the third day, all according to the scriptures. I have confidence in that. I have confidence that there is a city coming called New Jerusalem. I will dwell there forever. I have a strong confidence that there will be a new earth and the Hebrews, the Jews, will be on that earth. I have a strong confidence that there will be new heavens and that may be where the Gentiles go. I don't know about a confidence of the Gentiles, but I know there will be a new heavens. 
14.27, the fear of the Lord is a fountain of life. You know, they say here in Florida, we got the fountain of youth. Well, I just read the other day, they're saying that the water that could be contaminated. But there are places in Florida, the water is contaminated. You're not going to find Jesus, the water of life, John chapter 4, contaminated. Do you want that living water? Do you want that thirst that you'll never thirst again? John chapter 4. you got to fear the Lord. In order to get that, you got to choose to fear the Lord. Jesus Christ. How did you ever hear about the fountain of life? Because you fear the Lord, you got the beginning of knowledge. And thou shalt understand the fear of the Lord when you find the knowledge of God. And if you're the Lord's beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy's understanding, then you know the fountain of life. You know about Jesus. You know your salvation. And that all comes from fearing the Lord. Fifteen twenty, fifteen sixteen. Excuse me. Better is a little with the fear of the Lord, and in great treasure. In trouble there. Faith as a mustard seed. You know how small a, a, a mustard seed is? Yet if they take that little bit of, of, of fear, that little bit of a mustard seed size of fear, and put it in today, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Friend, you can own all the stores in the world. And you're going to have trouble. Employees quitting. The laws. People shoplift. And all, all kinds of troubles with that. walkouts and strikes and weather phenomena and fires and and die and go to hell. You know what's lacking today in the churches? The preaching that causes one to fear God. They got such fair, fruity tooty lemony messages. Who men that do not know what the Bible says. Worse so if a woman gets up there and preaches, she surely does not know what the Bible says. And we got the, the this VBS, we're gonna have fun. But we're not gonna put the fear in those children. We're not going to have the old-fashioned camp meeting. We're not going to have the old-fashioned tent preaching. We're not going to have the old-fashioned revival meeting where the fear of God. Where that child lays in bed and he can't sleep because he's going to burn in hell. And he's not going to sleep until he gets down and says, Jesus, I want to be saved. That drunken husband get uh, fear. They go to church today and they get fluffy totally kind of messages. And they get prizes and they get buttons. And they get a meal. And they do not get the fear of the Lord. That's what's lacking. That's a lie to see in church age. Proverbs 15.33, the fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. Now we looked up here, verse 9, verse, I mean chapter 9, verse 10, the beginning of wisdom. Chapter 1, verse 7, is the beginning of knowledge. Chapter 2, verse 5, understand the fear of the Lord, the knowledge of God.
The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. Now that you've put your faith and trust in Jesus, and you get in the Bible, and you read, study the Bible, you put yourself under a proper pastor, preacher, Sunday school, the Word of God, and you listen to that one preaching on the radio, and he may be wrong, he may have the wrong body, but if he still has the instruction of wisdom that will cause you to fear the Lord. Listen, I've had some of those radio preachers, I'm in the car, and I'm sitting in the car, I've got my eyes closed, and I'm repenting. And I say, Lord, you're speaking to me. I had one day, I went to church, the pastor sang a special song, like, wow, Lord, you're speaking to me. The preacher got up, preached a message, like, wow, Lord, you're preaching to me. And we got in the car, and we had, we had the preacher on the radio, and that, okay, Lord, enough already. And then somebody posted something on the Facebook, like, oh, oh, come on. I had, to, I had the target marked on me, and all the arrows were right in the center line. The fear of the Lord will start giving you instruction. The knowledge. That's not coming out of your churches today. I was in one church. I've been in many churches. I leave them because they're, they're faulty. I was in one church and, and every Sunday morning was a salvation message. And I went up to the pastor. I said, I said, I said, I said Pastor, I said, Every Sunday morning you're preaching to the lost. There's no sheep food. You got goat food. He said, well, I preach to all the people that are lost on Sunday mornings to hear the message. I said, Pastor, everybody in this church is here every week. If they're lost, they've heard the same thing over and over and over. There are Christians in this church that are not getting fed. Chapter 16, verse 6. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. Okay? By the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. From evil. They depart from evil. Why? What's the fear of the Lord? Look at chapter 8, verse 13. Let me down. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. And the evil way. Evil way. And to hate evil. Well, listen, my friend. Listen, my friend. Listen. You can't depart from evil without the fear of the Lord. You can't depart from evil without the fear of the Lord to hate, to hate the evil and the evil way. And you cannot have the fear of the Lord when you erase the hate. Only the devil would preach a message as erase the hate because the devil hates. And his teaching is hate. And God, for God so loved the world. I know. The holy and righteous God Proverbs later on says there are seven things that God hates. So hating evil in the evil way, fear the Lord. There are sins in my life that have been conquered by God, by the fear of the Lord. And there is no way, there is no possibly way that I could have done it. No way. Let me give you an example. I used to smoke. I started my first day going to high school, whatever year that was. I was in the class of 87, so about 83, maybe. And I smoked all the way to... 1990 something and 
I had emphysema. I smoked about three or four packs a day. And one time, my wife and my son, we were walking back to the car. We were in a parking garage, and I just passed out on the hood of the car. I couldn't breathe. We went to, a, I said, went to a lung doctor, and he said, I have emphysema. He said, you got to quit smoking. I had a hard time. And listen, when I went to church, I remember taking that pack of cigarettes that was open, and I put them on the altar. I said, Lord, take them. On the way home, I would stop and get me a pack of cigarettes. I told my wife before she went to work, I said, listen, take this pack of cigarettes, hide them, don't tell me where they are. Listen, I call her up pleading, crying. I'd be smoking cigarette butts in the, in the ashtray. And the doctor put me, was, was new then, he put me on this patch. You know, you put it on your arm. And I went to go get it. There's a drugstore that's all getting closed up. And I went in there and gave the guy the prescription. And, and he called my name, went up there. And he told me, he said, it'd be 20 bucks. 20 bucks then was the price of a carton of cigarettes. I said, I said that's ridiculous. He said, for 20 bucks. I said, you know what, sir? No, no, no sympathy. with you. But I said, can you put that back on the shelf right now? Or, he goes, yeah, I, I, he didn't put them. I said, I tell you what. Can you please put that back on the shelf? I'm not smoking no more. And thanks be to God, I have, did never smoke again. But once or two times after that. That was the Holy Spirit working in me. It was the fear of the Lord to depart from I hated that evil way of smoking. And it took me years and years and years and years and then health problems. Listen, I got major health problems today because of smoking. When I, when I, was, when I was diagnosed with, with, with the emphysema and, and the other lung conditions like that, and thank God I don't have cancer, as far as I know, I told the pastor of the church, I said, this is my fault. And there are many other ways, the health problems I have, but it's my fault. But what gave me the victory? Jesus Christ. Proverbs 19.23, the fear of the Lord tendeth to life. So, in chapter 14.27, it is the fountain of life. Chapter 10, verse 27, it prolongeth life. So you, you get in this circle... that revolves around the Trinity in your life in your fear of God and what he does to you and what he does for you and you're not going to see the complete relevance of your actions of fearing the Lord when you see people start being cast off into hell at the great white throne judgment. When you see many, many, many millions upon billions upon trillions upon more and all the fears that they had phobias but they didn't fear God. And life is in Jesus. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Proverbs 22 verse 4 Humility and the fear of the Lord are riches, honor, and life. What are riches? Gold, silver, and precious stones. That's the rewards that Christians get for their fear of the Lord. Honor. If you imagine the honor when Jesus comes with your crown, if you get a crown, not all Christians are going to get a crown. And when he puts that crown on your head, he says, Well done. 
That's honor. When God will say, with a crown being placed on your head, well done. And life, you're going to live forever. Proverbs 23, 17, last place. Let not my heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord will get rid of envy. All the day long. 24 hours. 7 days a week. 52 weeks in a year. Fear the Lord. That's plain and simple.